All right. Okay. There, there, How's no, my, I, my, I see it. I, the, it look. It looks good. Okay. Um, this is the new it, setup, dude. I I like it. I especially oh. like. Hold on, because he is like. Is that Malcolm X and and MLK behind you? Yeah. All right. I'm on board right. with that. I'm on board with that. I got. I'm, I'm at the point now where I have to keep my readers with me at all times because oh. uh, my eyesight has gotten so bad when I'm trying to read stuff. <laughs> right. Oh, same. I I uh, I went to the doctor and I had these glasses and then I go like this. Right. And then I yeah. read something and then I go, okay. And she goes, do you want bifocals? And I said, not really. She goes, do you mind having to do that? And I said, <laughs> no. And she goes, well, we're, we'll just keep, we'll just keep it in the way it is, you know? So, yeah. I mean, I, I did the complete opposite when I first went and tried and got like legit glasses. I, I they, I got trifocals oh. and, and like, I could not figure out how to use them right. And it made my head hurt trying to like figure out where to put my head to look at stuff. So I went back again and they retested my eyes and I go, look, just give me some readers, please. Because I just want to throw them on when I need to read something. Are you fine otherwise? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you've never worn glasses. No, no, I've never, I, it was, it was a couple years ago was the first time I bought like those crappy, store readers they can just buy them from yeah. the store right. um and that was the first time i realized like oh shit this is why it like sometimes hurts my head when i'm reading a book like you yeah. know all these little things because it wasn't like sure. blurry but it was like pressure and stuff yes. so so eventually i made i made the trip to the to the optro optometrist and they right. were like they're like oh yeah you need some glasses and i was like okay yeah yeah <laughs> hey by the way <laughs> you need glasses. Yeah. How did you get here? Did you drive? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did so, drive. Yeah. Okay. But it's it's good. It's good just because I I I've been struggling forever with weird things like reading the instructions when I'm cooking something or whatever. You know, I'm just like totally. I'm, I've been struggling, and now now it's like a new whole new world for me. Well, congratulations and welcome to it. I hope you like what you see. <laughs> Um, I still don't wear them all that all all the times that I should. I'll find myself right. just looking looking on my phone, and I'm like, I should be wearing my glasses, but I'm just saying, ah, fuck it, yeah. whatever. No. Nah, man, I'm not. I'm not a nerd, man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to wear my glasses, man. I'm no nerd, man. Right? Yeah, totally. I've had glasses since fourth grade. Oh. I mean, my eyes went way down fast and I took, I put them on and uh, this is like a major regret, right? Like I'm supposed to be working on all my expectations and my regrets, right? But when I, in fourth grade, I put my glasses on and it was like, you know, you see all those uh, social media videos of kids who can't uh, hear with the cochlear implant and then they go, oh, oh yeah. like, that. You know, like yeah. I put on glasses and I was like, no way. <laughs> like this is really, so they said, don't wear them all the time, you know? And I was like, no way I'm wearing these all the time because everything looks awesome and subsequently my eyes just like i think just well it could be genetics yeah i mean i mean yeah considering i was just thinking like yeah you've had glasses for a while considering my first my first exposure to you was in that video and you have your yep. the, i almost feel like they're malcolm x style glasses whatever like what do you what do you call those kind of glasses that he used to wear uh i it was cool because uh you know kansas still was always just you know, a little bit behind the curve, not mm -hmm. always, but in a lot of things. And one of them was glasses and you could still go to a glasses store and you could still buy glasses from the 1950s. Nice. Right. And yeah. they were even aluminum. They were aluminum. So, the, and I think the EPA changed and we weren't, uh, weren't allowed to do the, uh, is it iodized or what, how, what do they do the metal? Anyway, they couldn't make the metal glasses anymore, but the dude had some. So I was like, these are it. They even had the, uh, that little triangle on the side that like a, the, the, yeah. like a Chevy fin, you know, I was pretty excited about that. There's, the there's, cut, yeah, there are so many yeah, things right. from the 1950s in that era that I look at and I go, yeah, it's fucking cool. If only their music was better back then. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of it was good. Some, Some of it was of good, but I feel like, you know, but like I got, you know, the, you probably remember this, the, I got, uh, annoyed at an early age in the 1980s when all of a sudden the the oldies explosion happened oh, where there was oldies radio back. 
Yeah, yeah. And, and and it was never like the cool 50s and 60s music. It was always like the ooh, ooh, ooh type music. And I'm just like, right. get yeah. the fuck. I, I, it got so right. aggravating to where yes. I've had a lifelong sort of disdain for most of that music just because right. it, it, it hits some sort of weird nerve in my head where I go, oh, no, no, I can't do it. I right. can't do it. Right, right, yeah. Monster Mash was cool. <laughs> Yeah, Monster Mash. It was a graveyard smash, indeed. It was a graveyard smash. And then uh, I did like Eddie Cochran quite a bit. Eddie Cochran is pretty cool. And then when the Stray Cats came back, I was like, hey, <laughs> this isn't so bad. I, you know, I, I saw them twice live in concert, and they were just fantastic. I'm sure they were, I'm sure they were a lot of fun. And did you ever see, you probably don't, you're probably just that much younger, but the, uh, that show Fridays that came out to compete with uh, Saturday Night Live? Yeah, so Fridays, at that point, I wasn't watching shows like that because that would have been that would have been the 80s. And up until the late 80s, my television watching was, you know, Nickelodeon. <laughs> and uh, sure, and sure. Uh, still watching that, too. Don't get me wrong. That stuff was yeah. awesome. But uh, the uh, Fridays, they always had great musical guests and they were uh, a lot uh, California based. Mm-hmm. And um and man, I saw the Stray Cats on that show, and I was like, "Ooh, you know that that fucking huge pompadour and the, that big orange guitar." And they just were like all in black and just ripped it up, you know what I mean? And the Clash was on there, you know. They always had really great Devo. The Devo, if you look up Fridays musical guests or whatever, yeah. There, were, were there were there noteworthy were there noteworthy people in the cast on that that like I would know now? Um, yes. Uh, I uh, uh, <laughs> uh, what's that? Who was Kramer? What's Kramer's name? Oh, Michael Richards. That dude. He was yeah. in there. And then there's a couple people that you will recognize, like uh, the police officer who pulls over Chevy Chase in a uh, va- family vacation when they have the dog leash hanging off the back of the car. Do you remember that scene at oh, all? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Think, I think it's that movie. The cop, that dude was in there. Okay. And, um, but the, yeah, you'll recognize some people. There are some bad parts, and I'm I'm bad on TV trivia, so I apologize yeah. about that. I yeah. I'm yeah I'm pretty limited on it as well. And but like yeah, because I started watching Saturday Night Live probably around like '88 or something like that. It was when like you know Dana Carvey was brand new on that show, kind of the thing. Good years, yeah, those real good years. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm making a joke because of course I was I was I, if I got to stay up late. You know, oh. we would, I would watch, and that was the Belushi, uh, Ackroyd, you know, those years. Gilda Radner, right, you know, uh, good stuff. And when yeah. it was brand new, you know, it was yeah. very brand new, you know. So, yeah, very cool. They got that but movie anyway. coming out. Have you seen the trailer for that movie that's coming out? It's called, is it called Saturday Night? I think it's called Saturday Night. It's it's like, a, it's, it's a, a movie about the 90 minutes leading up to the first episode of Saturday night live. And it's supposed to be in real time. Like oh, it takes okay. place in real time. And it's got all these right. actors playing the Saturday night live people from the day and Lauren Michaels and all those other people. And it looks right. really good. I think, it, I think I can't think of who it is right now, but it's like, you know, writer director combos that you hear their name and you go, Oh, it's probably going to be good. So, okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the Coen brothers. No, not, no, the, Coen not the Coen brothers, brothers. but no, I do, I, I do, that. I do enjoy them quite a bit. But no, um, I, I was joked that would be hilarious if Coen Brothers made a, a movie about Saturday Night Live. I don't know, it just wouldn't be funny. They yeah. they made they made the Big Lebowski. That's a, it's essentially oh. a Saturday Night Live style movie. <laughs> it seems like so it good. could be so good, right? I mean, mm-hmm. just, I, I watch it on a yearly basis just to reacquaint myself with the genius of that movie. Boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's so got to awesome. be that's got to be my favorite John Goodman performances in that movie um yes have, did you see barton fink by any chance which is also i did a cult movie? i did way back in the but, but back when it came out and was first on like cinemax or hbo or one of those things yes right because they used to I, I i so remember that movie just because it was part i guess it was hbo and they had a series of movies that were called vanguard cinema and it was like the the edgy indie movies and stuff that they would play on that. And I think they showed Barton Fink. And I was like, I have no idea what the fuck's happening in this movie, but it's great. <laughs> yeah. So awesome. So awesome. I, 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 I uh, uh, 
re- uh, every time he goes in to talk to the movie executive, you know what I mean? And that, you know, they hire him as a playwright from New York. Yeah, yeah. He's got to go to Los Angeles and he's got to get acquainted with all of that stuff that goes on in Hollywood, you know? And he's just getting more and more disillusioned. But every time he has to walk in and talk to that executive dude, it's perfect. And I can't Did- see a movie anymore without thinking about them discussing the script. Oh. And now it's like, oh, this is how, okay. This is how scripts are made. You know what I mean? This is what yeah. goes on. Do you, um, you want to know uh, another another a Vanguard cinema movie that I haven't seen since back then, but I remember it being so crazy. And I remember so much about it, but I haven't watched it since then. It's a movie called How to Get Ahead in Advertising. Did you ever see it? Wait, no. What was okay, that? Okay, so it's, I don't even remember who's in it, but the premise of the movie is there's a man who who's like has like a high profile job at an ad agency and one right. morning he sees on his neck that he has a large boil and he doesn't really know what it is and very soon the boil turns out to be an eye and then the eye grows into a second head and that nice. head's that <laughs> head's personality takes over his personality and all right. of a sudden okay. it's like you know he's going crazy at the ad agency and shit and i can and anyone I just, else see it Yes, other, other people. Pe- yes, other people saw it, but it wasn't like a big movie. It was like an indie movie. No, but um, I mean the head. Is the oh, head just I, if, as far head? as I can remember? Yeah, everybody could see it and th- okay. didn't. Right. It thought it was perfectly normal that he had two heads. Okay. Um, well, sure. Why not? It's probably but, is it. But the, the, all I remember is that how genius is it that the title of the movie is "How to Get Ahead in Advertising." <laughs> yes, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll have to watch right that on. again one day because I keep thinking about it. I'm like, I gotta find it, and then I completely forget about it again. So, hey, dude, did you trim that beard, bro? I trim, I trim it often. Do you? Yeah, know? yeah. But sometimes I think I don't remember ever seeing the bottom of it. Yeah, because well, yeah, yeah. I think it's just also where I'm sitting when I film stuff okay. is a little bit okay. different right too. On. I I try my best not to look at myself because then I'll I'll start like focusing on things that I don't like and I'll just be like, I'll start messing with my face and stuff. Um, (laughs) But yeah, like I I let I'll let it get a little bit longer than this, Uh but it starts to get kind of annoying once it gets like really long. Same thing with my hair. This is almost as long as I ever want to have it. And then, you know, my wife will go and like cut like an inch or two off of it for me. Sure. Sure. So soup is intense. Smoothies are hard. You know, milkshakes are hard. Beer fuck, is fuck hard. That. I see you drink beer on this thing, and I'm like, no way. Like, how do you not end up with the? Well, I, well, I'm I'm very I'm very um, self conscious about the mustache part because sure, you sure. see you see some people with mustaches that grow way yes. too far into their mouth. Right. And so I'm I'm constantly like kind of trimming that part a little right. bit. Um, right. But but like, funny enough, I actually kind of kind of quit drinking beer. Oh, you did. Um, yeah, J- I mean, I'm on, I'm onto liquor now, <laughs> but uh, but it's, it's only like because you went clean. You're just not doing the beer anymore. No, it's just okay. because like I I got into the habit where like my weekends, my Friday Saturdays, are like my nights that I unwind, and okay. I've gotten into the habit of of drinking beers and listening to music. And sometimes like my my enjoyment kind of gets away from me. And by the time it's like 11 o'clock, I'm like, why did I have that many beers? That's fucking stupid. And so right, right. and so like I we got this uh we got one of those soda stream things. Have you heard of oh, those? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can make like a sparkling water and put some flavor in it and have a flavored sparkling water. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go go buy a bottle of, of booze and make one of those. And that way I can make myself drinks that just have like a little splash of alcohol in them. And that way the whole night I can just be like, yeah, having a grand old time. And at the end of the night, not only am I not that drunk, but I've been hydrated the entire night. <laughs> oh, sure. Hydration is the key. No hangover? Yeah, so yeah. good. Isn't it? So, yeah, that's amazing. So, t- so, so tonight's mixture is this is, li- this is lime water. Okay. With a little bit of lime, and then this is is uh, Margaritaville uh, tequila. <laughs> Sweet, the best kind. It's the cheapest kind. Let's let's be fair. I'm not. It, it, that's got to be the Buffett brand, right? I think so. I think it is. I I'm mean, with bu- that title, I'm not a Buffett would... fan, 
but I don't. But I feel like he would get litigious if he just started t- started taking his right. his, right. Song, his song right. title. I mean, that's an American brand. That's also a restaurant, right? Or no? Is am I wrong? It's not Margarita Town, is it? It's Margarita no. Bill. Well, I think I know he owns the restaurant. I really think that he has a, like an umbrella company that's Margaritaville, and it's just kind of okay. all sorts of different things. Sure, if sure, he was, sure. if he was smart, if you write an iconic song like Margaritaville, you sure. best. You best get all the money you can get from that shit. Talk just 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 ask Gene Simmons. Like you just just oh. do it. Do it. So I'm surprised that Sammy Hagar's what does he make? Does Cabo he make Wabo. His, is that a tequila? Yeah. So it's not called I Can't Drive 55. <laughs> no, but it is <laughs> named be- after a Van Halen song. The Van Halen song Cabo Wabo. Oh, Cabo Wabo, okay. Let right. oh, me you must- take you down. It's a great song. It's a great song. I feel like this is where your positivity about things really strikes me as being fantastic. Because I don't know that I would have said the same thing about that song, but now I'm going to agree with you and say it's a great song. You say what you say whatever you want. Well, I, you have to you have to remember, like my my <laughs> I've I've fully embraced the fact that bands that started in the 70s yes. and then and then fully embraced the 80s. I yes. love that shit. Kiss in the you 80s do. is amazing. Iron right. Maiden, not Iron Maiden, uh, Judas Priest in the 80s is amazing. Mm-hmm. Sure. And so, sure. and and I think it's because like it, you're, it's all tied to that time period now. Right. So it's like there are bands from the 70s and you have bands today that are still trying to fucking fuck around and recreate that sound. Nobody is really trying to do Crazy Nights by Kiss anymore. Like that's no, not, that's not, so it's literally like a, a frozen a, you know, a capsule of a time where, you know, I mean, n- not everything was great, but at least the music gave you the idea that everything was great. It was, you know, it's fun. Escapism in its purest form. Right. Which may, may be why they kind of have arrested America in pop culture kind of at that era for the for, for us, at, like the, the mall, the consumer mall culture. I mean, I, I'm still freaked out that I'm hearing, uh, uh, what was that guy? Uh, I'm never gonna let you down. I'm never Rick gonna Astley. let you down. Yeah, yeah, Rick Astley, right? Like, dude, my daughter's 14. She's like into that song. I'm like, how did that song make it? And it's because there's this all these 80s playlists that are on Spotify or whatever, and she's just into it. You know, well, what I mean? which he, is great. His his but, song be- also became a meme. So that- okay. That propelled. Do you, have you, did you not know about that? About his. I, I don't spend a ton of time on the internet. I gotta say. And so I, this uh, yeah. started years ago, though. So oh, if, okay. if, you, if you ever hear the phrase "Rick rolled," that's that's him. That and what that means <laughs> is you send somebody something that says like, I don't know, like if your boss sent you something that said, "Hey, can you look over this report right here?" And then you click on it, and it takes you to Rick Astley's video. You've been Rick rolled. Rick rolled. Yeah. Okay. So that so that kept that in our in our consciousness. Not to mention the fact that it's a fantastic song. I mean, it, it is. It, and he sound he's a, he has such a unique voice. Who the fuck sounds like Rick it does Astley? Does not look like it comes out of that face. Oh no! And no, he's a motherfucker that is aged very well. Like, oh, I bet <laughs> he is I a bet. handsome motherfucker and still sings well. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, well, so wow, Rick rolled. Rick rolled. Okay, I thought maybe it had something to do with Rick Rubin. Nope. Well, I mean, no. I guess you could do that as well. You could just pick some Rick Rubin. Actually, that would that would be that would be you know, considering he did a lot of hip hop and heavy metal. That might be a little more yes. jarring for people when you send him something like send him send him rain and blood. <laughs> Doesn't he make things famous? He's he honestly he is. I was talking to my wife about this earlier today. Okay, Rick Rubin is what in in my mid 20s i i decided i wanted to be but i didn't have the experience or the money to do it so that because like i by the time i was in my mid 20s it was you know in the early 2000s and i realized that my dream of becoming a rock star or at least a well-paid musician wasn't going to work out so i hit a brick wall and right. and soon after that, I said, well, you know what? I've I like the idea of like working with bands. Maybe I can go get a, a degree in audio engineering. So right. I did that. So I went to college briefly 
for audio okay. engineering. And I realized very soon after taking a little bit of the audio engineering courses, that I'm like, oh, I don't want to be an engineer. This is way beyond my mental capacity. What I want to be is a producer. Sure. I want to be the guy that's sitting in the room and goes, you should probably do that part two times instead of four. Right. Or um, right. maybe you should slow the tempo down on that. Or that song should be the single. That's that's right. who I, I want to be. And I was like, well, how do I do that? Well, one, well, if you look at all the all the pr rapping producers, they're all just rich, and that's how they got into right. the game. Or you yep. got to know people. I don't know anybody. <laughs> so where do I go? And so I so I ended up Oops. just abandoning that altogether. And uh, right. that which is which is the probably the 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 what do they call that the late motif of my life um it's uh get, just kind of giving up <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm gonna quit <laughs> yeah I'm, fuck gonna it. Quit. I'm gonna quit i'm gonna quit yeah 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 no huh well uh don't most producers start out being engineers though like they create a sound of some kind and then people like it and then they show up to your studio i'm pretty sure you... rick rubin did not Well, then, okay, because what, okay, now we're on the music. So here we go. This is awesome. So this is going to be like at least one guy who doesn't know exactly what he's talking about, but did he <laughs> not start, or did he start with Def Jam, right? He Def did, Jam? but I, I, I don't, maybe he was a bit, I don't think he was the engineer. And I think that he was one of those people that he got lucky because he started this, this company and very quickly they just happened to run into a guy named LL Cool J <laughs> and, you know, and then, wow, that and, then and then and then and then the the Beastie Boys happened right and and so I really think that it was right place right time and he has a good grasp on what makes music good and what makes artists work well and then he gets and you know once he once he combines with Russell Simmons then I think that's, it's just like all of these things all together. But I, I, I don't know, okay. I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I don't think he ever really was a, an actual quote unquote engineer ever. Okay. Well, that's interesting because of course, public and me also right on Def Jam. Great. Right. But mm -hmm. obviously probably an army of producers or the bomb squad. Oh, okay, bomb squad. Right. Which, you know, man, aren't they good? They were good. Right. Public enemy. Yeah. yeah. They were like, Hell yeah. I, I'm back on the. I'm back on them. You know, like I, I still have a CD player in my car, so I like, you know, when a CD gets in there, it's just in there for a long time, and I just listen to it over and over. And it, uh, yeah, man, Yo Bum Rush the show. Oh, mm. record is so good. It's got yeah. my least favorite Public Enemy song on it, but other than that, that what's album, that one? What's your least favorite? I don't. I I don't like Sophisticated. Oh, I don't, I don't like it when they get into this. Like, I don't like. I, uh, they, I, you know, I like to. I mean, I, I like the s s sound of that song. It's got that uh -huh. heavy riff and that and everything. It's really great. And then yeah. to say so sophisticated is awesome. That's yeah. very catchy. That's very. But the, just the whole is it like a gold digger song or something like that? Is that I, kind be of what it I, is? I believe so. Um, but I mean, I, as, as far as a, as far as I know, because you're talking to you know uh, not only uh, uh, the whitest of the white boys, but also I was I was I was a kid at the time. But you sure, listen sure, to sure. you listen to a lot of hip hop songs. There was a lot of songs oh, about no, girls who were just. Songs. I mean, there's a song called "Gold Digger" by EPMD, and like you know, it's right. <laughs> so. I mean, hundred percent. Not blaming them. I just wish like because they ended up going another direction. You know what I mean? Yeah. They really yes. brought the. Right. And so when and then I and then I feel like um and like look at me critique public enemy like <laughs> whatever. Dude. Yeah. Hey, this is a, it's so a safe like, space. You can do that here. Oh god, like right. Cause like and I saw them live a bunch, you know, and just like the the S one W's and the whole show and play out there and everything was just amazing and yeah. Shark's voice is great, you know, and that and that uh Terminator X, the whole thing was fantastic. Uh, and then the other one is uh, that she watched Channel Zero. And again, that's got that heavy riff, which I really like the way that sounds or whatever. But it's uh, it's framed at a woman again. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? She yeah. watched Channel Zero, where everybody's watching Channel Zero. And I thought it was an interesting, well, I wish they would have picked a different one. But that's just me. 
You know or, maybe, I mean? or, or, or maybe if they had come at it from both sides and it had been half sure, about a woman, kind of yeah, like, so kind of like on a, on a, on a, um, on Fear of a Black Planet. There's that Pollywana song, which is yes. So they, and that they approach it from the from the side of a woman and the side of a man as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. maybe that's but what man, they needed. Half it up. That band, like. That was a life changing experience. I guess, you know, like when you're at a certain age, right, and music hits you, it just blows your head. And then you're yeah. like, whoa, like you can't stop uh, viewing the world through the lens of your favorite music. You know what I mean? And like that was like for that stuff to hit mid middle America at like, I mean, I 80, uh, it was it was either my senior year of high school. Or, what did that album, the first album come out in 88 or 87, 80, 87, I believe was the first one. Okay. So I'm just I'm out of high school. And mm -hmm. I'm beginning to be, you know, just tr trying to formulate my life as an adult at that point. And that record just slams into America. And then qu in quick succession, they hit, you know, uh, Fear of a Black Planet and Takes a Nation. Really. I mean, I can't remember the order now because they're kind of bleeding into one. But it's like, wow. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, I don't know. I, I, I feel like that was the start. I, like, for white America, that was definitely uh, crank your head up into a new <laughs> into a new way of thinking, it, you know? It, it, yeah. And that's why I always say I feel like I – was born for me at the exact right time because yes. because the the mid 80s when i was just a little little kid but i was just old enough to start hearing music and go oh this appeals to me it was van halen and run dmc like at the same oh, time so that, yeah. that were, so and then yeah. and then right. You know, so I got into like the mainstream rap. So I knew obviously oh, yeah. LL Cool J and and yep. uh, uh, Cool Mo D, people like that. I yeah, got into all of I those saw things. Him live. That was awesome. That was but, awesome. But the yeah. I, I love this because I never get to talk hip hop very often. But um, but the the to be honest, the the real like awakening hip hop wise was when I discovered I was like, oh, so they're playing some good hip hop over here on MTV. But over on BET, they're playing the real shit, and that's where, like, okay. I where I saw Public Enemy for the first time because Public Enemy originally, I don't think they were played on MTV. Like, they, I don't think that they. Yeah, it was. It seemed like it was a while for them to catch up because once they had Yo MTV raps on MTV, that was still late '80s at that point. I yes. think when that show right. started, and yes. and and not only that, we had really in in Austin, Texas, they had we had really good cable access shows where people their shows would literally just be oh i'm gonna reserve an hour to do a show and i'm gonna play obscure music videos or music videos you can't see anywhere else and so i got turned on to so much stuff through cable access television and so i got that's to see awesome. yeah i got to see all kinds of weird shit so that that's why like you know people will ask me about like tv shows or movies from a certain period of time and i'll yeah. go I think I saw them and I think I saw that, but really the majority of the time I was flipping through a certain number of channels, just right. watching the, the music and taking in the music. And that was my life. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. so, I mean, but yeah, but hip hop was like hip hop and metal for me at the same time are kind of like growing at the same pace. <laughs> yeah. um, and then like both of them kind of, started to let me down in the mid nineties. And so, and a little bit later where like, I, right. I didn't quite love everything that was coming out and, and things weren't blowing me away the way that they used to. Um, but that's, you know, that's a different story, but yeah, but I feel it's so funny how like both of those kinds right. of music for me have so much that are related to e to each other. Um, not, oh, youth movement. not, you know, not even both youth movements. You know? Yeah. And not only, you know, the fact that they both give me the same, uh, rush of yes. endorphins or whatever yes. Um, yes. That, that, I, that I can't really explain because somebody will say, well, this is like death metal and it's really chaotic, but then you get the same thing from listening to, you know, run DMC. And I'm just like, yeah, I mean, it's, it gives oh, me totally. the same, the same feeling. So. Yeah, I think so too. And I mean, well, cause uh, uh, you know, this is going to date me, but you know, all the MCs, right. They had a different, I mean, you know, Eric B and, 
you know, like they all had, you had, you, you were not like listening to a drumming style, you know, like, oh, I'm into Neil Peart or I'm into, you know, Van Halen or I'm into whatever, you know, I'm, I, you were like, you had, you had to be into the person, you know what yeah. I mean? That they, 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 it was just, in, it was incredible to see, you know what I mean? And to, to witness and to, and to what, oh God, was, that was, uh, that was amazing. Speaking of yeah. that, just a, just a fun little connecting fact in, in three weeks, just down the street from where I live, I'm going to see EPMD in concert. Oh, are you really? Yeah. Is it where at? Is it what's the big? Oh, it's now a you can't get it right. Oh, I now can't. All your fans it's a little. It's a little, it's a little. It's a little bar. It's a little oh, bar. Okay. And so, like that, say. it's so much, so much so that I'm go. I go to their website, and on their post, all the people are like, "Why are they having this here? You guys had KRS One here, and there was no room for anybody." <laughs> And I'm wow, like, KRS oh. One was there. Yeah, this, this this place is like, um, they the, for a lot of old school hip hop. Like th this show, it's even it's not only EPMD. It's MC Light is opening up for them too. What? Yeah. Wow. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a blast. My wife's coming with me, and I'm all like, you're gonna, you're just you know have to have to deal with the old school jams with me. She loves that shit though, <laughs> but. She, but she, she's more like you know. We we see more eye to eye on early '90s rap. That's where we kind of come together as a couple with the stuff that we. Okay. Love. The, the '80s stuff, she doesn't quite see the same appeal that I do. But once Dr. Dre hits, then. <laughs> okay, Dre, right, right. Well, <laughs> that's a good entry point if you're gonna, you know, what I mean. If that's where you jump on board, that's not bad. And you can always go back. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Right. Wow! Yeah. Is this a show? Is this a show that's happening right now? <laughs> what? Wait! What are you talking about? Uh, us right now? Yeah, because you know, like, what, oh, cause like so. the, the discussion was it was going to be like we're going to discuss what the show is. Well, you've already hit on. You did two things that I'm very curious about. You talked about first of all metal and rap, and that's a stylistic choice, and both of them doing raising the endorphin levels. So that's yeah. That's that would be style, right? that varied styles can still amp you up to where you need to be. So that's, that's, that's like a song, you know, cause I've been thinking about this cause you sent that song, you know, and that song is just jamming. It doesn't even have a name, right? It's just track two or whatever. Yeah, like no that, name. It just is, a, it just motors and motors. And I tried to play it the other day and it, it's too fast. I can't get it done, you know? And I was thinking like, man, like what, you know, like, well, first of all, since I know you have all of this, <laughs> records in the back right there and i know i know that not every one of those records is metal no right not at all like not at all and so when you do those 30 years ago today or whatever you you seem to absolutely know what the popular songs were front to back like you and then some of them yeah well anyway so that being said i know you have a ton of different styles that you're into and and after listening to your stuff which is really good and by the way when did that ep come out the first when one you, yeah what year uh 2018 really? or 29 uh, 2018 or 2019 one of those two okay so when you say the first one and it comes out in 2018 or 2019 that's your first stab at like recording it, to that do, level at doing it by myself that was because i because okay. i spent because i because if you watched that that cranked and ranked episode where i would i did i was played my old demos totally totally so so I soon some at, of it yeah i, so I did that all the way through i'm sorry about that but i did i, I was into it and it was really great and that picture was it, the best it, <laughs> yeah um so that so in 1995 i started my first band and okay. And from 95 until about 2016 or, or yeah, or, yeah, 2016, I was in and out of various bands yes. and wrote a shitload of songs. And but you did or the band did? I, it, okay. Um, depending on who you're that's, talking that's to, different. this no, this, num this number may be different. But I would say out of all of the bands that I was in, I probably wrote 80% of the songs of that okay. were played okay. um and and even then I, that's not including songs that i co-wrote with somebody else 
So, okay. it, so there was, it's a lot of fucking songwriting that I did and, yes. and, and a good amount of them didn't even come out. Like they weren't recorded and I've already forgot them. Okay. <laughs> They're I, just I know in the too, ether right? somewhere. Yeah, totally. Um, yes. Yeah. So, but this was me kind of coming back around full circle and saying, you know what? The technology's gotten better. I got GarageBand on my computer. Why don't I mm-hmm. just, you know, now that I'm, cause I got to the point where like um, my life kind of hit a little bit of a low around 2015, 2016 and band life wasn't going to work out for me. I was just like, okay. and plus I was exhausted. I was exhausted from constantly hauling gear into a bar where I would play for two people and a bartender right. and then haul my gear out um, uh-huh. And I still had to pay the fucking bar tab because even the drinks weren't free. But I just, right. you know, and then I, and then go home and it's like, and then, you know, I have to hear over and over again, you know, oh, well, you know, why, why aren't you a rock star yet? I'm like, well, nobody fucking comes to see my bands. But um, right. anyway, so I got right. really exhausted with it. And then I just decided, I go, well, what, you know, I don't want to do band life anymore. Let's just it's come hard. back around full circle, circle yeah. and I'll do these on my own. And those first four songs that first ep uh, phase that first ep was um kind of like me just sitting down and saying well if i if i am calling all of the shots all the way down right. to what are the drums going to sound like right that let, what's the what's it going to be and i learned right. very quickly that as much as like i'm i love metal and some of the most extreme fucking metal out there my songwriting never comes out exactly as metal no, it's it it's pretty it's, heavy though it's heavy but i would call it more alt metal maybe it, it's very it's firmly rooted in the 90s for me i believe it, it sounds that sure, way sure. to me um yeah. so but uh yeah so like bringing bringing us to now though like i did that first cp and i was it was very easy i don't know what happened but it came out of me and everything like it's still one that i listen today and i go that i that's fucking great like i i'm very right. proud of that i quickly followed it up with a second ep which is called government name and i like that one but mm-hmm. that one was a little more rushed and me just being you know kind of riding the wave of the excitement and saying like okay let's let's just do some more shit. and that one was the right. first one where i i ran into the first example of what has brought me to now where I'm like, I've decided that I don't want to be the vocalist in my shit anymore was that doing government name, I ran into issues actually making my voice do the things I wanted it to do. So there are things on that second EP that that has been manipulated all to fuck in order to sound a particular way. Oh, really? Really? Um, just just little things here and there that probably, really? but but just enough for me to be able to to hit a right note that was out of my range or right. um sometimes I wanted something in my voice to sound a different way and I would have to double it up or do something else and even then I wasn't very happy with it so um but I, I but I was happy with that and then all of a sudden oh no and then I did one more song which I'm actually very proud of I don't know if you've heard it there's a song I wrote um, called side two track one that's on yes, that's one of the featured ones on your band camp then. yeah i i wrote that yeah. for my wife and okay. um and that's another one where everything just flowed out of me so uh-huh. much so that i had a i had a paul mccartney moment where i went like did somebody already write this song before me because this is yeah. too good and so right. but after that point all of a sudden there was well, around that time is when I also started doing the old head stuff. Okay. And and I my first intention was, oh, it's cool. I'm going to talk about music. I love talking about music, and now I have an outlet to do it, and I don't right. have to go out and be social because my anxiety is through the roof, and, like, it's crazy. Right. So, right. and I was like, oh, and maybe I'll also be able to document my process of, like, throwing together more music. But then I yes. realized that, like, once I started trying to write stuff again, I started – First, just writing riffs, and then the next day I'd go back and listen to them, and I would delete them. I'd be like, okay, these are no good, or whatever. And so that went on. All of a sudden, there was a pandemic, and then I moved from from Austin to Houston, and then mm-hmm. I'm here, and 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 all of a sudden I'm back at this point where I'm trying to write songs again because it's it's just inside of me. Like I just feel yes. like I want to keep doing it. 
Right. And, and once again, like I did the, the, there's a, the last song that I released, which is called shift, which came out last year. I think, I think I put it out last year or earlier Mm -hmm. this year. I don't remember, but that was literally one where I wrote and recorded all the music and it took me three year, almost three years to get to a point where I was happy. What? One track. One track. Took me three years to get to the point where I was happy with the vocal idea and the um, the lyrics. But even then, I vocally I hate that song. I don't like really? the way I sound on it. I don't. I I feel like somebody else could have done what I was trying to do better than me. But I, but I wanted so badly to put something out that I got to the point where I go, okay, this is fine for me, and maybe I'm being overly critical of myself. So I threw it out there. In the meantime, I had written this other batch of eight songs, of which you have heard one. And, yes. um, and once again, came together really fast musically. I had all okay. these ideas. I didn't overthink them. The songs are all, you know, two and a half minutes long or so. They're all real short bursts of energy. And I was like, this feels good. And then every single attempt I've made, not just writing lyrics, but I've actually gone and recorded lyrics or vocals um, Mm -hmm. for one particular song two separate times. And each time I was like, there's no way I'm putting this out because I cannot, I don't like, but I finally like, like came to the realization because like my wife's kind of like my sounding board and like, I'll complain about stuff and bounce things off of her. And then, one day we're having a conversation and I was just like, you know what? I, th- I think I would love it if somebody else sang on my songs. Huh. Like I want somebody else's voice. And right. you mean, lyrically, it's already hard enough for me, but I, okay. but the biggest thing for me is vocally, I can sing well enough in my range. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. But, but I don't, that's not what I want to hear on my songs. I'm kind of tired of that. And so that's why the conversation okay. with me and, and Eddie Sparks started where I was like, right. he was like, I'll do vocals on your stuff. And I'm like, we'll give it a shot then. Right that's <laughs> but awesome. we haven't, we, which we haven't done that yet. I mean, he's, he's written some lyrics and even mm-hmm. he wrote lyrics to two songs and I don't even uh-huh. know how they're going to go along with the song. He just sent me the text and I was like, how the fuck did you come up with this? Right. Right, 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 right. That's awesome. So, so that's kind of an in limbo kind of thing because I don't know exactly how that's going to go. Um, okay. But 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 one thing is I think is certain is that I I felt like a calmness come over me when I finally just admitted I'm not the vocalist that I want on my sure. songs. Sure. Um, and I don't have Mike Patton's phone number, so I can't call him. No. <laughs> No. Okay. Right. Unfortunately, right. not. No, but I'm just Is that saying. What the internet's for? Isn't the internet just to stalk him until you find his manager's phone number, and then you, uh... you know I've tried certain things with certain people, and you run into some dead ends and uh, unanswered okay. emails. But I haven't okay. done that with Mike Patton because I don't, I don't, I don't want to be that guy. But um, right. Yeah. He not has yet. so many fucking projects. I'm going to be like, hey, I'm some oh, guy you've never met before in my life. <laughs> Would you sing on my album? You're like a legendary vocalist. Please just drop everything you're doing. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't have anything going on. Maybe he just, you know, there'll be like a month in there where he's like really looking for, he he wants to go to Texas. You never know. You Maybe know so. I mean? Maybe so. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. that's, I, I feel like I just vomited all this, all this, all this da- data on you. No. Um, nope. Because this that, is what the deal is. Okay. You talked about that. So we talked about style. You've talked about your songwriting. You talked about the fact that you have it in you. You've talked about how you plow forward, even when you're not exactly sure what it is that you're doing is correct for it. Yeah. And you also talked about wanting to be a producer slash engineer, whatever. And you went to school for that. And the thing that I was struck by, one of the things that I was struck by when you did that stick video for us is that you said, I repaired the sound on this so it oh, sounds yeah. better. Okay, so I'm like, oh, the guy knows engineering. You can engineer things. And A little so bit. then when, okay, but then you sent me your songs and I listened to them and I'm like, wow, sonically, these are really good. And, it, and I asked you and you said, yeah, it, you were the guy. You're, yeah. you're doing that. You're recording that at your house, right? You're yeah. mixing that, you're placing that, you're EQing that, and you're making it sound like what it sounds like. You are doing that. So there you go. Yes, There's that. Yes. Yeah. Right. 
Okay. So if we're going to talk about writing songs and making music and stuff, even if we, you know, even if this is the part in the documentary where it's about you, <laughs> right? You know, what I mean? we talk, you know, instead of it just being about the big subject or the general subject, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would, I would have to say, like, dude, like, I was hoping that by starting a conversation with you about when you said you were stuck mm -hmm. and you didn't want to overthink it, I thought for sure all you needed was just a person to say, uh, hey, what about this or whatever, right? You know, yeah. and just the simple fact or the act rather of like bringing up the conversation, making that the topic, then having to think about it would something would click. However, when you say stuff like, yeah, all that stuff came out of me. I didn't even, really, you know, like those stuff that you love that came out of you super fast. Mm -hmm. I'm in the same position you're in right now, right? Mm -hmm. I have, I've written, I have, I have three records that are done. You have one of them. Two of them are in the can. And I'm just trying to, I want to press them or whatever. But what I, my point is being is that, is that I'm also, I just was like, bunk. I don't have anything else to say. Like mm -hmm. I, the world got so crazy so fast and I'm so pissed at it. And I don't <laughs> want to, I don't want to be pissed. I don't want to, yeah. you know what I mean? I don't want to be a pissed person. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that dude. And I'm getting older and so grumpy old man and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. I'm just, I'm trying, I would, because I want to work for solutions and I want a solution to come out of my lyrics instead of a critique or a complaint or whatever. So, yeah. 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 So, and a weird, uh, so I was hoping if you and I got into a conversation about songwriting, about lyrics, because I, of course, uh, write my lyrics and sing my lyrics and stuff like that and mm -hmm. and again and uh, i i think well my dad passed away in 2015 and he never he didn't get to hear the record so i think i was done in 20 i can't remember what it says on there i wrote it down on the notes in that record that you have so at about the same time 2018 2019 something in there mm -hmm. we were going through the same thing musically or we had come full circle dropped out of band life Right. And then gone into, well, what, what do I have to say as just a person? Because obviously I still have songs in me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And yeah. though that performance part is gone, the song craft is got is still uh, pursuable. You know what I mean? And then I didn't have like when you write with someone, when you collaborate, it's fucking beautiful, especially when everyone is really good at what they do. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it just <laughs> happens. You know what yeah. I mean? And I know that everyone is putting in their effort to do whatever they're doing, but in a weird way, it's their personality because it's their style and it's collaborative and it's a band thing. And then you just agree on something. And it's like you egg each other on. Yeah. And so it's hard in one respect, because if you really have a good idea, someone doesn't like it. Now you have to compromise and you had a vision, you know what I mean? But then on the other hand, you're like, man, I would have never done that. And that is amazing right so there's that but when you are being the 100 percent person mm -hmm. now you have to just you're in your head and I, jessica's my sounding board as well I, I i try not to make her get me out of every <laughs> out of every uh hole that i fall into just so i don't wear her out you know what i mean but mm -hmm. um, but it's like okay so you and i are now both in the same place Right. So it's weird. We kind of we kind of did a thing. We kind of went to a place and now we're kind of trying to do this thing again. And we're not entirely sure if what we're up to, we are overthinking it. And that was perfect when you said that in that email. I don't want to overthink it, but you are already overthinking it. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. To that? OK, yeah. so. OK, so how do you get back to that thing? And this is like. Like those songs that I wrote, the three albums were the songs I had. I didn't even really write them. They were just blah, blah, blah. They were just coming out of me as, as fast as I could record them. They were just flying out of me. And and um, I don't write good songs, but I'm a good songwriter in that I love and enjoy and get a lot of just I, being a songwriter in my character that I have in my mind of who I am. Being a songwriter is like one of the first and foremost things that, well, what do you do? Well, I do this, but I'm really a songwriter, <laughs> you know, yeah. like that, kind of yeah. thing, you know? Right. Okay. But then you have to prove that. And then people go, and then, you know, whatever we could get off on the, because the arts are a very weird genre to be involved in because there's no right answer mm -hmm. to any of these equations or any of these things that you get onto. But I think it's so, so let me ask you this. Have you 
attempted to write lyrics again since you and I started talking about this conversation. Yes. And those were lyrics. Those were those were the lyrics that I wrote and finalized and tried to record, and I hated how Didn't it mind. came out. Okay. It, Do you hate the lyrics? Kind of. I mostly you, just hate. I mostly just hate the vocals. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Then there's so, okay. You mostly just hate the vocals. Okay. Yeah, the lyrics so, are, are, are okay, but okay. I don't know. And so this has happened since you and I have had that e have, have had this conversation about. Yeah. Okay, because I have also started thinking in beats now, and have started trying to put words together since we've had this conversation. So thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay. Nice. So this is. Good. I, I haven't even attempted to record any of it, so I don't know if I hate it or not. I'm not to that point yet. But this is okay. So you so are so you can't give those lyrics to Eddie and can't have Eddie sing that stuff? No, because I don't think they're good enough. And honestly, the the few the couple things that he sent to me, I was like, this is way better than anything that I could write because it's way more interesting. And I I'm I've got I've gotten stuck in the uh <clears throat> kind of the opposite of where you are, where I, I'm angry at things. Okay. And, and there's, and not only oh, I'm angry, it, I'm not, angry. <laughs> I just don't want, I don't want that to be, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, oh yeah. Yeah. That's, but I'm angry. But yeah, I yeah, want, okay. but I want to write, angry. I want to write. Okay. Angry lyrics, but I don't, I always like to find a way to write angry lyrics in a way where if I explain the song to somebody, they go, oh, okay. But other than that, they don't quite understand what I'm exactly what I'm talking about. And that's where it gets really tough for me because there's that level of it. And then there's the level of, I like to be kind of, um, uh, I don't know, self, self-aware and self-degrading a little bit. Cause it's okay. like the, the, I am the person that will stand up when I see something that's wrong and I'll go, that's fucking wrong. Also, I'm not the best person in the world either. <laughs> so, right. so my right. lyrics, I want my lyrics to somehow convey both of those things where I can clearly right. look at things and go, this is fucked. But mm -hmm. I, but I also want to be like, but I don't have the answers to this. So, sure. and, and that is like literally like most of my life when it comes to like, you know, me being aware of political and social things happening around me mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. I've, I've felt like I've always, and as I've gotten older, I've always had a very good grasp of how to be a good person. And okay. when I look at somebody else and I go, you're not being a good person. Sure, but sure. then, but then that part right there where I'm pointing, it immediately makes mm -hmm. me go, but what the fuck do I know? You know, it's like, so it's like, so it's just, it's this sort of like questioning myself while at the same time being so fully aware that in certain respects, I'm right. I am right. <laughs> you know? Um, and so right, it's, okay. it's a very weird thing. And so I've been trying to write these songs um, that were the best way that I can describe them is it, it is my brain post uh, post pandemic post Trump. And so like these things were like the world to, in my in my brain has gotten like so, so difficult to wrap my head around how certain things could be happening, not just in the country, but in the world. And it yes. feels like it just keeps snowballing and snowballing. And I'm just oh, like, yeah, for sure. like, this is crazy. And so, um, and not to mention the fact that I have spent um, the majority of my life, I would say probably since we're talking when I was a kid and I discovered Van Halen and, and run DMC around the same time, mm -hmm. I have felt disconnected from I mean, you name it. I've I felt disconnected from your average American 
from sure. white people, from sure. men. I I've, I've sure. felt so disconnected from all of these things that are considered the norm for for 35 years now. And so okay. these feelings all, I, I've written songs about a lot of these things so many times in my life, but it's just, you know, sorry, my dogs are barking a little bit. Um, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but the, uh, but so the, so that those feelings have only gotten stronger and stronger to where whenever I sit down to write something, that is always what's trying to come out. And it's such a huge ball of emotions and thoughts now that I don't even know where to begin sometimes. So Right. And it's changing fast. Yeah. The landscape is is changing so fast. Mm -hmm. You know, that it's uh that was, you know, but uh and 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 you would think that we have studios in our houses basically and our computers and mm -hmm. we have an internet that we could upload anything onto that we would be able to move as fast as the news is moving. I'd love but to it would be great, but it's, it's also, uh, it's just, I mean, I, I think it's just cause I'm so old now. It's not really my place to be doing it. I don't even, it's like, my example is always like, well, you know, you hate to walk into a kitchen that's on fire and throw water on it, but it's a grease fire. And then it just, you try to help, but you're throwing the wrong element on the thing to try, try to douse the fire. And then you just make the problem worse. And I'm not entirely sure that I would say anything that would make it better yeah or that i could that i can help in any way uh so i've kind of downgraded my life from trying to make things better to just trying not to make things worse you yeah know what I mean? like, <laughs> yes i'm yeah. just gonna get out of the way and i'm gonna let that one go by because i don't really understand it and it's maybe not up to me you know what i mean because i'm not the future yeah i'm not the future anymore you know what i mean i'm the past you know what yeah. i mean and that's and that's fine it, every human being will come to grips with that. I th but I feel I feel like though, even though you and I are like 10 years apart or so in age, sure. I feel like sure. we both have do have a role, which is supporting the younger generations. Sure. Um, and They're not only a really good job, not only with not only with just like support, but also like, you know, I don't know, you, you get like, like, I've always say that I don't feel like any man is very mature until they're at least 30. And and so like there's that part of me that wants to go, hey, can I share I want to share like my outlook from this end because sure. one day you're going to be here too and sure. it's just, you know, one of those things where I don't know. This is but th this is my brain. And it's not just when it comes to like big issues. I can't nor like like you asked me a question. I don't even remember what question you asked me earlier and I talked for like 10 minutes. And so it's like you know, somebody will say like, you know, well, what's your what's your favorite band? And I would be like, well, you can't just are you going to ask me that? Do we have like an hour to talk? Because I right. can't just no, answer that question. <laughs> right. Totally. So totally. Anyway. Yeah. And I, and this medium that we're on right now is, is mm. part of that, you know, just content. And that's great. I mean, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not slamming it. I'm just saying like, you know, it's got its pluses and its minuses, you know. The, the plus is but, it's like therapy for me sometimes. Well, it is. No, it totally is. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. But yeah, like, but I keep thinking, you know, like I, you know, I, I, had, you know, I didn't intend on being a parent, but I met someone who was very awesome and that's really what she wanted to do. So I got on board with it because that's what it was, you know, going to take to make that. And I'm very glad to be a parent. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I love my daughter a lot. Uh, so I didn't like, I didn't. So I guess basically I didn't spend any time preparing well, when I'm a dad, I'm going to be this kind of dad. You know what I mean? Or anything like that. Yep. You know what I mean? Same thing. I'm, same so thing. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm winging it. You know what I mean? And, but I'm, what I'm finding out is that the information that I have is it's based on a world that doesn't exist anymore. It's not, it's not there. She can't take my answers to problems because the problems are different now and instead of it being like oh well that's what happens every time you're a teenager or that's what happens because now we're like and i get it when i was a kid we were all going to die in a nuclear war that was just what was going to ha happen do you know what yeah. i mean i don't know if you got that but at, 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 you know being 10 years in difference but we had civil defense shelters and we were doing duck and cover and there was everything was about the bomb and it was like you were just <laughs> like okay 
You know what I mean? And yeah. then, and then, okay, we had a pandemic and now everyone has seen every single movie and TV show about like zombies and like <laughs> viruses, you know what I mean? And like just, yeah. you know, and, and everything is post-apocalyptic and dystopian and all that other kind of stuff. I mean, we were getting hammered with that stuff. Right. Yeah. And then you, and then Trump, you know what I mean? Which is just an extension of what was already going on. Yeah. But just made it way more obvious. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then now we've got these, I don't know, we could go on. I'm not going to get into politics or whatever, but that this. You can get into whatever you want to. This is our show. <laughs> okay. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. But uh, I just don't feel like, I think that like, oh, so the environment. Yeah. Oh, fuck dude. Earth's not even going to be here. Like we're not even going to be able to do it anymore. <laughs> like it's just not going to work. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, that's, that's like. I always make I always make this joke because in the late '80s, like every metal band was doing a like environmental song, yes. like you know, like save the rainforest or whatever. Right. And so, right. like you know, there's that part of me when I was a kid. I'm like, oh, well, these people are already on board, and we all know about it. So clearly, these issues are going to be cleared up by the time I'm an adult. Sure. No problem. <laughs> no no problem. problem. Right. Yeah. Because smart minds are working on it. Yeah. You know, didn't happen, yep. did it? No. Money. Oh right? yeah. That's become, yeah. that's even more like, like, I can't even think about that. I can't even, you know, cause I, cause I think all the time and I have these conversations with my wife all the time. And I feel like I talk in circles with her because it's always about like, man, I really wish that like people who had a trillion dollars were more interested in helping people they didn't know. And I'm like, and I know that that, that literally is a, a wish that just like goes up into the air and it just nobody hears it, nobody cares, and it's not going to change anything. But I still can't wrap my head around the kind of person that doesn't realize that they have enough and that maybe they should help other people. And so it's like right. there's so many things involving money that that's frustrating as hell where I'm just like, because I I feel like I have a very nice life and mm -hmm. and we have – credit card debt and we don't have you know all so sorts of extra money to go on uh vacations overseas and all this other shit we don't have that kind of right. shit but i still right. look at that and go i'm not really going to complain about this and you know and so that's that part right. of me that goes well if i had a trillion dollars would i would i feel the same way then would i then go well um i've got eight trillion I don't need like three of these trillions. Let's just sure. feed and clothe the homeless. Because in sure. my brain, I go, that seems like it makes the most sense because not only are you helping people, you are going to go down in history as a person that fucking helped millions and billions of people. Sure. So I can't yeah. wrap my head around the fact that like people aren't already doing that, you know? And so, yeah, it's, right. it's, it's crazy. To, but, but, but this, and by the same token, if somebody is trying to do that, then they're running into fucking corporations and other people that have, right. you know, less money and they're trying to get more money. And so it's just it's so complicated that it it's so frustrating. I'm sorry. This is you're in my brain right now. This is my brain. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> no, I'm with, dude, I'm with you. And I, I like why would there and then it seems like the entrepreneur, not the entrepreneur. I'm sorry. What is it when uh, you are philanthropist? Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's like ph philanthropy. <laughs> right. Like that has become a business in and of itself. And I'm all, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I, the thing that, and thank you for, for saying what you were saying. I feel like, yeah, like, okay, so if you did have that much money, would your brain still be the same? And I, I don't, I mean, we used to talk about greed. Like that was the thing that was like, okay, let's try not yeah. to be greedy. Okay. You know, be grateful for what you have, whatever this, you know, but now it's just like acquire, 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 right. You know, like our individual, uh, our, our, our personalities were turned into consumers, right. And so we could consume the things that built our personality. And then we needed more and more money to acquire more and more thing to, to satisfy our personality. And as the, um, like the inner world of a human being became, retreated further and further away from expression mm -hmm. right due to not being able to market it or whatever you know like not being it you know feeling emotions around it wanting to guard it then it, it 
our language changed, our thoughts changed. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and again, that's just my viewpoint, which may not be happening at all. It may be fine. I don't know. But I mean, like the kids today are going to have to figure that shit out. They're going to mm -hmm. have to literally live a different way. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? And I don't have that answer. I can make a recommendation or, yeah, if you need to build that thing, I'll be there with a hammer you know, whatever it takes, you yeah. know, but I don't think I can lead anymore. And that's the way sometimes I feel to bring it back to music. I don't know what, I don't just want to be uh, yelling into a microphone about like all this shit I hate, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. yeah. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, but I, I, yeah, I, how old is your daughter? Uh, 13, 13. Okay. So mine's 14. So we also have the same age daughters. Yeah. You weren't and born I, in December by any chance, were you? Jan I was born in March. Okay. All right. I just didn't know if we were exactly 10 years apart. That's pretty close though. Yeah, pretty close. Um, yeah. I, I was, uh, but, but, like, but I, yeah, I, I, I find myself being the same way with my kid as I'm just like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to offer you my experience and I'll help you with whatever you need. But I do understand that the world is, it doesn't work the same way that it used to. So I right. think probably that has been the most, difficult thing as a parent that I've gone through over the past yeah, maybe a year or two is starting to let go a little bit and be like, all right, well, you know, I, I'm here to talk about things, which luckily we still get to have important conversations about stuff from time to time. Exactly. But I, I also go, I'm going to let you figure it out because I, I didn't have a bad upbringing at all. But right. I did have parents that I was their third kid, and and my oldest, my oldest brother is eighteen years older than me, I believe, and mm -hmm. so there was a big gap. Yeah, and my, my and my my parents were 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 in their late thirties when I was born. Okay, and so. And I ended up being the most difficult of all the kids. So once Good I started you. to be a little bit rebellious, they just went, just just go to your room, go to your room. And so I learned so much stuff like on my own. And sure. and because I I I didn't know it at the time, but I had severe anxiety, social anxiety, and um I was very like self-conscious and I didn't like myself very much um, when, when I was younger. Um, so I kind of had to do it via media, via television and movies and TV shows and stuff. And, and I think, and that's why I always put such a huge emphasis on as much as people like to shit on MTV, for somebody like me, not only were they uh, introducing me to music that I wouldn't hear otherwise, like Stick, right. never would have heard Stick if it wasn't for MTV. Right. But right. also, they started dipping their toe in like, well, here's a little bit of political news. We got Dave Mustaine telling you to vote or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. like, and, and then you had in the beginning when they started doing like reality sh TV shows, like the real world, right. the, their, their, uh, their, I guess, ambition with that show was to highlight the differences and similarities of people. And so very quickly, you start seeing these shows and these things, and you're going to like, yeah, why are people racist? Why are people homophobic? Doesn't make any fucking sense. A lot of right. that was that media that was being directed at me, which, yeah. which, for, which for a little while was a very positive feeling because you're like, oh, man. I So you watch these movies about like, you know, racism and, and bigotry and, uh, and, yep. and, you know, sexism back in the day. And yep. then you, you, you see this stuff happening and, and you see these other people that are your age and a little older than you, like would have been your age or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it just fills you with this idea of like, okay, we're going to get better. It's going to get better. Cause why would it not? Why would we not move right. away from all these horrible things? So that's yes. kind of like, I, I kind of, I got that all like myself and mm -hmm. there's that part of me that goes, well, is that what my problem is? Is if I was actually forced to be out in the world with all kinds of different people, would I have thought everything was going to get better 
And did I just have this rose colored MTV <laughs> viewpoint of everything? Because once we got, I always say it, what, um, 9-11 fucking killed all of that vibe because like that was when I started to see people all of a sudden revert back to all the old bigotry from that I saw when I was younger. And so, oh, for sure. and so, and so all of for a sure. sudden, all of a sudden I went, Oh shit. I thought we were, I really thought we were, you know, once, you know, when I was, when I was 13 years old, I really thought like by the time I'm in my mid twenties, every people are going to be so much nicer to each other and so much more open and inclusive to each other before the word inclusive wasn't even used that much. I was yeah. like, of course, that's where we're moving on to. Oh, of course. Right. Oh, <laughs> and, and, and unfortunate for me, that's where I continued to move on to. And a lot of other people, a very loud minority, I might say, um, mm -hmm. did not continue to go to go that way. Sure. Um, yeah. So I don't even know what that whole diatribe came from, but uh, it yeah. doesn't matter. We just had it. Well, yeah. it, I mean, OK, so this is I guess this goes back to just, you know, being exposed to the media that we were exposed to. Yeah. Uh, you know, same. You know what I mean? Like, um, if, you know, for me, it just would have been the punk rock scene, right? Like, I'm listening to, uh, yeah, uh, I'm listening to uh, classic rock radio, anything that you would find on the FM dial by that point, you know, that was still, you know, probably five years, still playing Led Zeppelin and whatever, you know what I mean? But your mm -hmm. Boston, your ELO, and all this other stuff. And then the pop stations came in and all this. And then new wave hits and punk rock then falls right you know i mean i and to my understanding of it is like punk uh pre-punk happened then punk happened and then new wave happened to take the edge off the punk but then the punk came back it like became, and it became hardcore <laughs> the hardcore yes. came out of it yeah. <laughs> yeah right and i i could be totally wrong about that i have no idea but like uh when um you're talking about music from the 50s right like mm -hmm. you had some pretty edgy cool shit like, I think kids were like, I mean, when some of that stuff was coming out, I mean, it was new. And again, I think everyone was like, oh, it's race music, you know what I mean? Or it's, you know, and kids of different races could start to unsegregate, you know, desegregate rather, I guess is the way you conjugate that. But yeah. but then along come the Ricky Nelsons and the whatevers, that music, mm -hmm. that ooh, stuff that you're talking about, you know, and it took the edge off of the rock and roll which then turned back into the pre-punk era or, or in the early metal and all that stuff of people trying to put the edge back on. And then there's a softening and then a sharpening and then a softening and a sharpening. And so by the time it's 81, 80, 81, I mean, you're talking 35 second. I, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? It's See, like, you're, you're, you're an 81. You're talking damage by black flag comes out. Oh, so that's, that's like, and then to have that hit your head mm -hmm. at that age was scary. Like mm -hmm. for me, it was frightening. Like, I, like, okay, sure. You know, plasmatics, great band. They're on solid gold. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. seeing it on a format that I can, that I can handle because I've seen other stuff on that format. I've seen Andy Gibb or whatever on the same format. So I understand that whatever's on there is just a presentation and it's not, it's not going to come get. It's not going to come yeah, get me. But but also that shows the importance of sh of things that you didn't. You, people don't think are that important. You wouldn't say, "Oh, solid gold's really important for some people in music." But I'm like, if you see the plasmatics on solid gold, oh. that's it's bringing something to you that you would not have otherwise seen. So exactly at Saturday Night Live, like Devo's on there and Fear is on there. You know what I yeah. mean? And they had some. Edge. And then of course the Clash was on Fridays and and. And then seeing the B-52s and all that kind of stuff and like freeing your head from the from the radio rock at the time, the FM radio rock. Yeah. But then it but then to hear like like I had no I had no I had I want I saw the plasmatics on solid gold and I was like, what? That is incredible. Like I think she smashed a television or something or cut it in half with a chainsaw or whatever. You know, there she was with a tape on her nipples and the rhino horn you know and all that stuff and she's out there and you know and like they're just dude with a mohawk and uh -huh. there couldn't be 
further from what I understood, you know what I mean, yeah, at the time. Yeah. So then I get, you know, and then here they are going to go to Kansas City and I get tickets. You know, I'm going to go see the plasmatics, man. I'm going to do this thing, you know what I mean? And it's like, they cancel. And so my friend who had, uh, I couldn't leave town, so I couldn't, uh, my parents, I didn't have a car. They didn't want me in t- cars with teenagers. It was, you know, that budding time where your parents don't want to let go. Of yep. You know, yep. you want to go, <laughs> right? And uh, so uh, he had gone to buy the tickets. And so he went to get his refund back. This is back when you had to go to the, the box office. Buy tickets at a record store or a box or whatever, office. Whatever, yeah. 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 And, uh, and so I said, dude, I don't want the money back. Just bring, just buy something that looks cool. And bring and bring it back. I wanted him to repeat this experience. You know what I mean? And he comes back with like these Dead Kennedys records. You know? Oh shit! And he's yeah. like, and he had fresh fruit for rotting vegetables, and he had uh, In God We Trust Incorporated, right? So he's like, which one do you want? And I said that one. And I don't know if you know what's on the cover of In God We Trust Incorporated. Are you familiar with that? Album is it the, is it the one the the dollar bill looking thing or the is that that one? Yes, it's formed into a cross. Yeah. Jesus nailed on dollar on dollar bills. And yeah. I was like, and then there's like that scene of those old ladies in the car looking out at like a Ku Klux Klan rally or whatever. And they're like, it's that like, oh, it's shocking, but we also support it because we're the status quo or whatever, you know? And it was like, mm-hmm. it was not understandable. I didn't know what was going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you put, so I said, I want that one. And he goes, good. This one has more songs on it. You know, fresh fruit for rotting vegetables. I'm like, cool. So I take it home, man. And I'm used to, you know, I'm, the stereo's in the living room, right? I don't have one in my room yet. You know what I mean? I have to listen to my music and headphones because I'm not going to bother my parents with it or whatever. Yeah. And I put it on my headphones and I turn it up and I put that thing on. And are you familiar with that first track on that record? No, not right offhand. No, it's been a little oh. bit since I've heard that one. Dun 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 dun. Our religions make me throw up. Our religions make me sick. Our religions make me throw up. Our religions oh. suck. Yeah. You know, and then he just starts screaming this stuff, and it was so loud because I had no idea what was going to come out. I was like, Ugh. I threw the headphones off my head because I didn't know what was going into yeah. my ears because that sound had not happened. And so then you're like, okay, you know, you back it down, and you have you sit there and you listen, and you're trying to re- you're trying to read those lyrics along to how fast he's singing, and he, they're cursing, and they're just blah blah blah. Everything that you, my teachers suck, my school sucks, my you know, and then it's like wow, my teachers suck and my school sucks and I'm not learning the right thing. You know what I mean? Like to tear your head open like that was huge. Rap music did the same thing. Did yeah. metal do that for you? How did metal do that for you? So, yes. So, but that's because that's because of how I, the avenue of metal that I got into because um, the first metal album I ever like heard all the way through was an Anthrax album, a thrash metal album. Sure. And those bands were more political and social. Um, so I, I got right behind you. Um, yes, yes, these yeah, guys. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, right and on. and they and they, you know, they they weren't as bold with some of it as some of the other bands were. But right. but it led they were kind me. Of goofy. Well, they had they, some goofy to them. They didn't have goofy songs, but they but they. You know, war jams, and they had yes. they had they didn't take themselves that seriously, which actually seriously. is why they it's why they became one of my favorites, really, because they right. musically speaking, ninety nine percent of it is very serious, and uh-huh. but their their demeanor is very like we're just some dudes that make some music, <laughs> yeah. you know, but uh, right. um, yeah. but it it worked out that like you know bands like that, and then leading me to uh, you know Metallica. And Metallica, you go back to especially like the Master of Puppets album. Like, there's fucking songs about drug abuse, songs about religion, songs about like it's they cover all these different things. And they that's a good example. James Hetfield is one of those guys that's very good at writing a song about a particular thing, but he's not hitting right. you over the head with it. Head with it, yeah, totally. Yeah. And so and he was into the punk rock scene, right? Yes, they were very, they were very much so. And and funny enough, like around the same time, so I got into I was getting into heavier music, you know, which started with Van Halen and went to like, you know, Cinderella and Guns N' Roses and things like that. Yep. But yep. around that same time, I remember I had a friend 
God, this was in the third grade. So what year, what year, what year was that? Third grade. Hold on. So this particular thing. So this was pre-metal for me. So third sure, grade, sure. I would have been what, 10, 11? Something. So this is around, this is around 88. Um, no, you... I, I have, I was born okay. in 70. I was born in 78. So anyway, I don't know, maybe, maybe nine well, if years you're old. You're six in kindergarten, you're seven in first grade. You're, yeah, hey, so, about 10, nine or 10, nine or 10. Yes, okay. right. So um, for my birthday, a friend of mine from school buys me on vinyl, because I had a record player back yes. then too. He bought me Troops of Tomorrow by The Exploited. And oh, that. I had never heard The Exploited, didn't know anything about punk music, right, period. Right. right. And, and the cover of that album, I don't know if you remember the cover of the album, but it's like a street scene. Yes. Hold on, hold on a second. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Can't wait. Because this was their metal stuff, right? They kind of went metal. It's still punky. But, okay. Uh, hold on. All right. Let's... Dude, I want to go through your record collection so <laughs> bad, dude. Um, okay. I just see that behind you every time I watch one of your videos, and I'm like, damn, dude, there's got to be some classic stuff in that. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So this is this is the cover. Yes. Yes. So yes. I, I, I'm, yes. A, I'm like Black a nine-year-old, a nine-year-old right. kid. Seeing yeah. like these fucking dudes yeah. right here, but and, yeah, right. And the and the songs like this has that this is that fuck the USA song on it. Yeah, and um uh, and and it it it's an amazing album. Like if like now once I got into metal, I went back to this and I go, this is there's no metal in this at all. It's punk. I don't know why people. I what only, labels it on? Uh, it's on Secret Records. Secret. I don't know. Is it down there? Secret Records. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, but um, so that what was year, a big what year. Again? 80, 80, 88, We think. Well, th I think this album was eighty two, and then I got it around eighty seven, eighty eight. Is when my is when my friend bought it for me. Man, I forget that that the metal thing that the that the go for it rock and roll part of punk rock changed that fast. I usually think it's around 84 or 85, but I guess it could have been because Combat Core started putting out all those records and even the Circle Jerks kind of had a couple of metal sounding songs. Oh, you're talking about crossover, a crossover yeah, kind crossover of stuff. stuff. Yeah, DRI had, yes, yeah. totally, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot. And, that and that, well, that was kind of like a merging of like punk became hardcore. I almost feel like like hardcore happened and there were two kinds of hardcore bands the punk ones who couldn't play very well were the main hardcore bands the ones who could play really good they started playing more of the crossover metalish sure. type stuff because sure. like because as much as i as much as i fucking love black flag a lot of greg ginn's guitar work is just fucking nonsense it's not even real playing it's just him going bah! Not even hitting the the key the the notes in the right way. Like it's just some fucking noise. <laughs> and so you have okay. other dudes. I, I, we, okay, we can have a discussion about what that did to your ear when it hit you, and about oh, it's that great. It gave you. It's what, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, but okay. but if you but you if you want to separate those with the guys oh, who could literally okay. do the guitar solos, like that was the that's sure. like different sure. sides of hardcore for me. Yes, but yes. But anyway, so I was already like getting on board with this stuff, but um, I would meet people and they would say, oh, you're into this band. Maybe you should hear this. And that's what got right. Anthrax and Metallica and Testament. And then shortly after like Megadeth and Slayer and all that stuff kind of came together. Mm -hmm. But if you're if you if all of those bands that I'm naming all had political and social content in their lyrics, I didn't get into metal my metal wasn't like denim and leather. That wasn't that wasn't me. That wasn't the metal I was listening to, and and so not I yet. looked not well. I, I'm I like some of that stuff, but right. I don't I don't own any Saxon albums, and I don't oh, own no. it. I don't own it. No, no, no. Except I don't have any of that stuff. No, no. Okay. Um. So because that that stuff was like cheese ball to me. And sure. like, just think about it. I got in I, I, very quickly. It's almost like Van Halen was as cheese ball as it's going to get for me because then I discovered hip hop and thrash metal and punk rock. Sure. And so, of course, sure. I wasn't going to listen to balls to the wall and go like, yeah, this, that's what I'm right. all about. Songs that are about sure. fucking nothing. <laughs> right. So, right. so that's right. so, so politically speaking, that that's what led me down that path was because I would hear these bands 
and they would have a song about the environment, a song about the homeless, a song about how religion is <laughs> shitty, a song about how the government sucks, like whatever. And so he sells who's buying. Yeah, peace else right. was fine. Back back before yeah. Dave Mustaine became a born again Christian and a, a right winger, oh, he it that appears. Did he he's, do that? Yeah, he became a born again Christian and his whole demeanor now, he seems like he's one tweet away from becoming a Trumper. So it's it it just So he okay. Yeah. So he did the Ted Nugent thing. He went down the Ted Nugent path, you think? Not what? totally, because he hasn't outright said shit that made me just say fuck him yet he still seems like an asshole but there's okay. like the ted nugents of the worlds are, are the ones that like i like i'm this is another way that like my emotions like push and pull me because yeah. if somebody if somebody says something fucked up in their past whatever mm -hmm. it might be whatever whether sure. it's racist or sexist or homophobic sure. or whatever if sometime later on in their life they 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 are publicly in an interview or somewhere say that was fucking wrong and that was fucking stupid and i'm going to be a better sure. person and then they sure. start being a better person i love sure. a good i love a good redemption yes. story i uh, love, yeah. it. We do. We love it but the pe the people that are on my shit list are the ones that mm -hmm. say the shitty stuff and you go hey that's shitty and they go fuck you i don't care then you're on my shit list so ted nugent sure. kid rock those people are all on my shit list sure. Because sure. it's like somebody, if somebody came to me and said the shit that you said, you know, bothered me, my reaction would be, oh, what, 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 what part of it? Like, like, let's have a discussion sure. about this. My, my, my reaction is never going to be, well, fuck you. It's because I'm just like, right. Because that's rock and roll. That's not really rock and roll. That's a really small part of douchebag rock and roll, but that's not rock and roll. So, <laughs> I mean, it is like, you know, you think about, but even like, even everything down to like, Every like few months, people will will bring out they'll they'll do a, a a TikTok or a tweet about this portion of Steven Tyler's autobiography where he literally admits to adopting an underage girl in order to take her on tour, and the parents let him adopt her, um, and then I think at some point he just abandons her somewhere. But his his what? Uh, <laughs> yes yes it happened. So, but here's the thing, like, if you flat out ask him about it now, he's the kind of person that would be like, I was fucked up. That was fucked up. And so that makes me go, well, quit bringing out all this fucking stupid shit because like everybody's done something they're not happy about. Some of us are just way more. Right. Than, than I don't others. think any of us adopted an underage girl to take her on tour with us. I don't think we did that. I'm pretty we, sure that. Right. We didn't, but we also weren't rockers in the 70s who were super famous. So maybe, I don't know. I don't think I would have. I don't know, man. I don't think you would have done that. I don't think I would have done that. I don't think I would have done that. I think I would not so, have done that. So my, okay. so that's where that's okay. where the push and pull happens because I go, okay. well, sure, if it was the 1970s, sure, my kid's not going to go hang out with Steven Tyler. But, but later on in his life, if he looks back on things like that and is like, that's fucked up, then I'm like, well... You're a questionable human being, but you're not going on the list because okay. you haven't you haven't said what's wrong with that. I do it again in a heartbeat. Then you're on right. the shit list because you're okay. not trying at all to make okay. yourself better. Like fucking the, the 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 thing that like hurt my heart probably more than anything in the world is Bill fucking Cosby because I grew up oh, right. I grew up with Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby was like the dad when I was a kid. And then as sure. soon as all this shit started coming out, there was no remorse in, to, in him at all. It, there wasn't even a point of him that went, you know, um, I, I didn't do this, but I, I feel very bad for these young people. He, there was no, I feel bad. There was no, I'm trying to, you know, talk to these people. He was just like, no, I'm Bill Cosby. And then that was, that was the, and so it just made me go, well, fuck you, Bill Cosby. And fuck you for ruining my childhood <laughs> because, you know, there, there was no remorse whatsoever. Right. I that I couldn't even I couldn't even pay attention to that. I I I not that I disbelieve it or da 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 da. Like that one was like. First of all, it's like okay. How many other famous people have been doing that? I, you know Katie. what I mean. <laughs> well, okay, but like, and this is very. 
uh, well, a Jeffrey Epstein, dude. I mean, whatever. Well, you know yes. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Like, just yeah. like, like, uh, the, disp the, 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 alarming number of times it is someone who is not caucasian that's busted for that and drugged through the mud is a lot higher than oh I yes i mean so there's that thing also breaks my heart too yes you know what i mean like that was really hard because somebody enabled that kind of behavior for a long time and people, and someone, and people knew about it right yeah. right so and those people were probably famous producers or directors or what, you know, whatever, whatever executives yeah, yeah, in the entertainment yeah. business. And they're just getting to sit back and not, I don't know. Well, yeah, man, on, on this, on the thing. same, on the same token, yes. when they, when they, you know, they, they uncover another person and they, they do this whole hoopla of like, um, you know, they, they molested these kids. This is bad. We should cancel them. I, my brain immediately goes to cool. Can we now cancel like all religion? <laughs> Cause like, right, right, if, right. if you're going to get so fucking yeah. been out of shape about a right. celebrity, maybe sure. an entire organization of sure. people who are supposed sure. to be yeah. helping people or, or, you know, I don't know. Yes. Um, no, they, I, totally. So it gets it's, fast. yeah. So that's why that's why like you know my brain is, is always moving all the time and like you know I have to be on anxiety meds and take melatonin to sleep because like because I'm constantly like thinking one thing and then going oh but what about this and what about this and like this thing because everything is way more complicated than people want it to be and then when oh, people course. when people out there are simplifying things that's when I go yes there there are some simple things I will agree but there's a lot of things where I'm like, I, 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 I don't like to think of myself as a smart person. I think I'm like moderately intelligent, but I'm moderate. I'm intelligent enough to where <laughs> I'm constantly like, I don't know enough about this. This seems more complicated than what they're saying this. And sure. so like it, it really like, so like I have two, I have two, like, you know, um, phases i guess or two modes that i am on and one of them is i'll just be talking a mile a minute for 20 minutes about a question that you asked me about getting into metal and then sure. it goes to some other place or i have yeah. to completely shut myself off and like ignore everything and focus on some particular thing whether it's like a piece of music or or something but like i have to be able to like turn that shit off. And that's like what I do on my weekends. My weekends is like, can I just have a drink and put on some music and I'm going to sure. try to not think about fucking anything else because most yeah. of the time it's not shit that has anything to do with me, but it's still in there. And so it's oh, exhausting. Totally. It's, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. So we should have done this on the weekend. <laughs> we can do the next one on the weekend. Uh, I, I, um, I, thought, I was like, "Hey, how about Monday?" I didn't know this yet about you, dude. I didn't know that we were going to write. But we don't know. We don't know anything about that. But like, that's what the the thing is. Is like, this is just we we've, we've got some getting to know each other to do. Sure, but not man. only that, we've also got some. If we're doing like a show together, sure. Should it be about something, or should it be about whatever the fuck ends up happening when we talk? I don't know. That's, I mean, that's the long form interview, right? That's, that's the, or, right, you know, or the long form uh, content or whatever, which you can say whatever you want to about Joe Rogan, but like he did that and they, you, okay, I'm going to listen to this person who I would like to know what they think for two and a half hours. Yeah. <laughs> you, know and, I mean? you know, and it sucks because for a little while I kind of liked what he was doing and then something he had happened. Great guests. He, he snapped. He had great guests. He had great guests. Yeah. He, you know, like he could have great guests. I mean, I only watched that show if the person he was interviewing was too. You know, I mean, he's just whatever. You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. I, I, I'm not coming down on the dude, and I'm not praising the dude. He, he doesn't register in my daily thought, like yeah, ever. Not you know what I mean? Unless you know, okay. But I do, I do feel like who else did the long form? discussion before that like did because there really wasn't any tv programming that did it because it was too tight everything was in a slot right it was when the internet came along that, like, yeah because the only other like long form interview person i can think of was like mark maron was doing it but i think he yes. came after i think he came after joe rogan but mark right. maron like was the dude that like first got paul mccartney and shit like he was getting 
he moved up to like big celebs right um, real real quick but um, yeah real, real quick yeah but yeah. I, I, I guess it's just the podcasting thing is where it all stemmed from like podcasting you know once once it became clear that oh people like to listen to these long form discussions or whatever mm-hmm. um right. which is which is which is really what led to me doing old head the old head thing because at first mm-hmm. it was just going to be a podcast because I, all i wanted oh, okay. to do was i just wanted to talk about music and uh-huh. um and uh then i did like a handful of episodes of a podcast where i just talked and then mm-hmm. I started to see people on YouTube doing like a similar thing, but like in a short form kind of way. Mm-hmm. And that's when I was like, oh, I'm going to do that too. And then the world's kind of merged where I have some longer form stuff and some short form yeah. stuff. And, um, but um, the one thing like, you know, once we started talking about doing something together, I immediately started to say, well, now that I've done there's one long form show I do and another one that's kind of a long form, the old bollocks thing I do with uh, Howard H. Smith from Acid Rain, which is like okay. album reviews and stuff. Those are yep. always about an hour long. And then Crankton Rank can range anywhere from an hour and a half to two and a half hours, depending on what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, yeah, yeah. But, but the thing that, that I remember that we ran into on Crankton Rank real fast, probably about like six months in, was we found ourselves trying to come up with with ways to not have to do the same format over and over again. And so that's why we do some okay. that are like slashed and mashed, uh, uh, grooved sure. and removed. Like that, removed. that was just right. us being like, well, we love talking about music, but do we have to rank discographies every single time? And so doing something new now with you, know, with you in hindsight, I go, it maybe it would be better to actually not have a format and right i well okay i totally agree and that's very cool and that and and when i was thinking about what what we would do together i figured because i've seen you know because you did such a good job with those bands you should know right Uh those were great and all of them are cool and you are very exhausted in your research and i was very impressed being how close you got you got it yeah i mean you just you nailed it and i don't know if it was because i mean you and you credited matt quite a bit over at that website and he does i mean that dude i just got an email from the other day you got a press kit i saw that he posted it on facebook yeah right and so like as the band we didn't even see some of that stuff i think i actually wrote most of those things which is weird they ask you to write whatever and then we were you know but um, and then they take pieces of it and add it to whatever. But it's like, yeah. oh yeah, okay. I never really knew that they pushed that live EP or whatever. I, we never. No one comes to you for approval. They're just moving very fast to try to sell records, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's fascinating to watch other people piece your history back together because really you're just trying to make sure that you don't forget your toothbrush in the hotel room. Uh, you know what I mean? Before you're back in the van and have to get to the next place or whatever. So yeah, a lot yeah. Of stuff goes right but um but but you're 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 uh so i'm assuming that your research on the and on the other groups is also as exhaustive or at least what the things that you've pieced together are also very close to the truth right and it's, so this ability go ahead i was just gonna this say it's it it's partially it's partially just it's partially that me looking for whatever information that i can and then and then are you, you okay? yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you add on top of that my experience from being in a band, and mm-hmm. just and just my, um, because my because my what I did for for stick for that episode, mm-hmm. I've been doing for bands for most of my life. So right. I've been reading all sorts of different band stories and trying to get all the information I can. So it's a little I piece things together. So that's why I can kind of go. I feel like this might be what happened here if it's a if it's a gray area. So um, it's all of those things like put together, which is why like I'm kind of disappointed because like the I did the Muzza Chunka one, and I was yeah. like, oh, that one's great, and I was like, but I, I did that didn't really get that much of a response. And I was like, well, maybe one day, maybe one day somebody from Muzza Chunka is going to run across it, and they're going to say, hey, you got all this shit right or whatever, you know? 
Oh yeah, no, totally. Right. So I, I get, cause I've seen you actually do interviews from other people that you've done for those things. Anyway, my point yeah. about this yeah. entire thing was that I thought that this format that we're doing now or whatever we're doing now wouldn't, uh, and I don't mind if you want to do it with me, I'll change the backdrop and we'll, we'll do whatever, you know what I mean? If you want to <laughs> make it, I'll totally do it. I'm into it. But I, I was not imagining that I would be the only one that would be sitting in this seat, you know, while, uh, while you're talking to them, because you have you have you have, you have a wide, you have a, a a net to to capture, and I think there are a lot of people who feel the same way we did. Like, hey, man, thank you very much. That yeah. was really great that you did that. They would probably want to come on and have these kind of conversations with you, you know, and especially. And another thing too, I'd like after watching our interview with you, which was great, and thank you because that was really the first time in that amount of time that all of us had even been and not in the same place but you know what i'm talking about so yeah yeah but like then you watch it and then you go oh is it did i emphasize the right thing or like did i offend somebody you know like when we were talking about the video or whatever you know like dude toby tilly was awesome and i don't know if i said that during that interview or whatever and i know he had to write that video treatment and i was like making fun of the video treatment stuff but you know what he just had to get his foot in the door it mm -hmm. wasn't that he didn't know what he was doing. He was just trying to write something that would get him the job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, oh, you know, whatever. Because, you know, I'm not a video producer. So, like, you, when you fill in the gray areas of being in a band, I don't know what that – I don't know what coming up with a treatment and turning it into a record label and trying to direct it and get the budget. And I, I have no idea what that's like. You know yeah. what I mean? That maybe you know, so anyway. But I didn't, I didn't think – I figured if you – if we came up with something and started talking about songwriting, because that's always kind of what we come back to or whatever, that mm -hmm. you could talk to other people who wrote who and find so, out what the songwriting. So you, so you weren't even on. You weren't even. Your brain wasn't even thinking about this being a, an ongoing thing. That's no, it brain. was. It was. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't need. I, this is your channel, dude. This is your thing, yeah. right? Well, you know, like it's all. Okay, go ahead. Can I explain well, I, to you? I don't mind. Okay, good. But I'm going to okay. I'm going to give you a, a little nugget of in my brain why us doing a, a regular thing together, however regular we can do it. You sure, know, it doesn't matter. Sure. Here's sure. why it's perfect for my channel. There's 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 various reasons, but there's one big one. Let's start with the smaller reasons. We we seem to be um similar type of people and we yes. bounce off of one another very well. That's already a okay. thing. Um, right. we, we, uh, I, I, we seem to also both like each other. So that helps too. Yep. Um, but here's the thing that makes this so fascinating and interesting to me is the, the old head thing, even from the beginning was me kind of talking about a certain period of my life. And that period right. of my life was the early nineties. And I right. always started to want to emphasize these kind of outlier bands that were important to me or that came onto my radar in one way or another. And, right. and then that, that ended up moving me towards like doing bands you should know. And, and then eventually led me to doing stick bands you should know. So the fact that one of those dudes that I was a teenager looking at the television and seeing the music video and saying, Oh right. man, it'd be so great to do that. I'm now friends with one of those people. And not just that, you were one of the people that was in a band that I look at and go, that's probably the kind of band I would have been in. That's probably sure. what I would have been doing. If I was 10 years older, I feel mm -hmm. like that would have been the vibe that I would have been going for. And right. so it almost feels like a full circle thing now where like all of these things, I always champion these smaller bands that nobody, some people don't seem to remember. And I remember that one music video and you were right. in one of those one music videos. Right. And so it's totally. like, it just feels like for, for the old head brand or whatever, you know, right. it just yeah. feel, it feels utterly appropriate to like have somebody from that era that all right. of a sudden is involved in my shit because, awesome. and I don't know, I don't even know where to, to go from this point, but sure, it could, sure. it could very well be that every time we get a chance to do it, we end up in a snowballing conversation that lasts for two hours. You never fucking sure. know. 
Um, I don't, right, right, right. But at the same time, if we don't put any kind of label on it, it can also be the kind of thing where like you could wake up one day and be like, oh, we should totally talk about like this era of, of music. Let's talk about like the, the bands from the late 70s. Cool. Let's do that the next episode because there's no fucking rules about it or whatever. You know, it's just like right, right. we can talk about it can be free flowing or we can come uh-huh. to it with a with a some sort of, of uh, idea. I mean, it doesn't fucking matter. So, right. Well, the, one of the things I think is cool about your Nettie's thing that you do is that you have a like a list like you know what you're going to talk about. Like you've planned oh, yeah. this out, yeah, which means that you can group things yes. if you need to be because it's not just you're not winging it. It's like okay, we're gonna this is this and this is this and that. and I, that's pretty cool that you guys like have decided to like talk to one another over email or on the phone or whatever, and then like okay, here's the next ten bands we're gonna do, and this one's gonna be a cranked and ranked, and this one's gonna be a grooved and removed, and this one's that's, gonna that's be a exactly how we do it, yeah. Yeah, and it's very it's cool because it gives it a flow and a, and a continuity, which mm-hmm. is nice. And yeah. you do you do go into places that are not always exactly related to the topic. Oh yeah, <laughs> very or often. Just, you know, like, yeah. So and that, but it's cool to have a jumping off point. You know, to, you know, it's cool to have a, a skeleton to flesh out. You know, when when you guys do that thing, I think it's very cool. But yeah. Dude, I'll I'll do these with you, whatever. This is great. I mean, I'm having a good time. You know, I this took me like I had to think about this. You know what I mean? Like it, it was nice and uh, get the lighting and everything. And it do you, do, you, do you just do you just have bolts of fabric somewhere in your house that you just grab? I, I do, I do. Uh, <laughs> the, I did all these uh, stop animation videos. Uh, I had a YouTube channel for a while and. Uh, and for various reasons, it ended up being canceled, and I uh, <laughs> lost my uh, I lost my will to deal with uh, YouTube as a multinational corporation or whatever, or Google or whatever. I We're understand that. ABC. Yeah. Are we on ABC? Is that the parent company? Right. I that, I, I don't I don't even want to know. I'm just okay. ha- I'm just happy they're letting me do this. <laughs> Nice, man. Nice. And I, it's like it's like the saying. it's like the it's like the I feel like I'm I'm like Rage Against the Machine. Like people would people would get mad at Rage Against the Machine because they were on a major label. I'm like, but you sure. gotta get into the inside in order to rage your way out. Yeah. So I'm getting yes. into the big multi trillion dollar company, right. but I'm spreading my positivity. When you're just like I'm just yes. like, fuck you. I'm not gonna do your right. shit. So right. fuck not you, gonna... I won't do what you tell me. Tell me, thank you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I have, I, there was a Joanne fabric that was next to my house. They're not there. It's an LA fitness now. Uh-huh. And, uh, and they had the, all these fabrics for uh, cheap. You know, you could go to the back where somebody had bought a yard and there was only a yard left or whatever. And you could buy the stuff for just change. And, uh, and I had a movie screen, an old pull down movie screen that I just taped all of it up to. And then I would do these little, shows these little stop animation show things trying to teach myself how to stop to stop animate yeah. by using my body and uh and i kept a box full of these things and i was like yes i even got out an ironing board today wow you should yeah you should but not only that. that like you'd like you there's a plant there's a there's a, oh, a sure. statue yeah. what is the what is the sure statue I my, my base i this was done. I am a uh, my profession is organizing. You know, I'm a professional organizer, and so I get called in to go through people's stuff. You know, that for that's, for for real. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, yeah. That's how I'm. So, that's how I'm. It, in, so it's so is that like? Do you deal with like hoarders and stuff? Yes, sometimes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. There's different reasons that people want to go through their stuff or have somebody organize it or go and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And, um, I had the, so what's cool. Well, there's a lot of cool things about it actually. Cause you get, you're in, um, you're invited into people's places and for whatever reason they have too much stuff and they, they need to go through it and their emotions are attached to, all the things they own you know and yeah. so but then but sometimes it becomes a, a you know it becomes a problem for like for, 
a lot of reasons having too much stuff can be, become a, a problem in your life. It could mm-hmm. gets in the way of you moving forward or doing whatever. And uh, so I was uh, contacted by, uh, and there was a period of time when um, it seemed like I, I was working for a lot of um, people who'd passed away or had yeah. gone into um, uh, care facilities and stuff. Yeah. And so you get the call from their kids or their brother or whatever and saying, Hey, can you, we got to, you know, I got this, somebody had a house or a condo or an apartment and they need to finalize a person's business and they don't know where their birth certificate is or their social security number or their car keys or their car title or their, I mean, that's what you end up doing. You're fishing. Sifting yeah. Yourself. When someone has passed or has been put in an institution and, uh, I was in this house of this lady who was a doll maker. Oh mm-hmm. my God, dude. Like I don't even really get into dolls or whatever, but I mean yeah. the artistry and professionalism, like all the molds that she made and all the, and the clothes that she's selling for them and all the stuff, they were absolutely like museum quality, like cool stuff. Right. You know, yeah, yeah. She, had, she had all these um, studies. What would you call that an anatomical study or whatever? And um, and uh, at the end at the end of the thing, uh, it was like the family like took everything they wanted and everything. And I was like, uh, <laughs> you know, and they were like, do take it. You know what I mean? So it was like every now and again you get, you know, and you feel like you learn something about a person by going through their stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? You're, yeah. You see their diplomas and you see their photographs. That actually their- seems like a super fascinating job. Like that, dude. It's like yes, it's amazing, and it's. I feel very privileged to Mm. be able to do it. You know what I mean? Like it's. It's actually very cool. See that 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 alone is a reason a reason why we should keep doing these because I feel like you probably have a lot of stories and stuff like that, and not just from not just from being in you know in the the music scene that I you know grew up you know idolizing, but also just doing things like this and and we haven't even scratched the surface of like what you were doing from 2000 up until you and I met each other, you know, we've, sure. like, we've, we've, sure. t- we've scratched it a little bit, but I'm all like, there's sure. probably so much that like we can go down the, d- into the rabbit hole, as they say, of uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. talking about, I mean, and not was, to mi- not not to mention just music shit. So. Yeah, man, I was pretty, pretty hyped up to figure out what you did. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I don't and talk I'm not about it because I don't know how public you are about it, but that's a pretty I don't, cool thing. To do. I, yeah, I don't talk about it on my uh, on my channel or anywhere, um, simply because I um, I I don't want to say the wrong thing. Sure. And then because um, my because my in the in the grand scheme of things, I would love for this to become like my channel to become huge, where I have sure. you know you know, a million subscribers or some shit. But at that yeah, yeah. point, there's way more scrutiny of like, ah, I said this thing and we're going to go to his job and say this. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave it, leave it alone. Keep it separate. Yeah. Yeah. Keep, yeah. Yeah. But, that's um, awesome. That's anyway, awesome. so the, okay. This, I mean, I got to wrap it up here in a couple minutes though, yeah, do it. But, Whatever it takes, but, but I almost feel like this is a good place to, to, to stop it. But the, the really important question that, that, we both have to really focus on now is what do we call the show? <laughs> you seem to be a good namer of things. Nope. That's Eddie Sparks. Not me. <laughs> oh, that's Eddie. Well, ask Eddie what he should talk about. Yeah. Like, uh, what is this? Uh... Cause my, uh, my brain immediately went to, we're going to be called Smurlin head. That's what it's going to oh. be called. <laughs> You know, like Cagney and Lacey. That sounded a bit suggestive. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, man. Um, we, we can we can take our time, but okay. um, is your name known? Do people know what your name is? On it, but some people know that my name is Steven. I have no problem with that. Okay, I but, just didn't um, know. Yeah, I, I actually, I actually went for a long time calling myself Steven on my episodes, and uh-huh. then I started getting like emails and comments where people would just call me Head or old head and i just went okay fuck it i'm just gonna start like in this in this oh, universe i'm old right. head um right. it's like you know it's like fucking david bowie that's not his real name but you know he's <laughs> me and david bowie we're two peas in right. the pod you know right um yeah 
But and uh, Sting. And you Sting. Know, you, and, you and Sting and David Bowie. And now we're back to the rainforest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, been me champion the rainforest for a while. Yeah, and, yeah, and he yeah. solved it too, didn't he? He solved all that I shit. He, he and he and Bono took care of all the problems in the world. Super um, good, and I, I thank them for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, every day. But okay. thanks. So, yeah. so, so, so okay. my last my last question for you, just real yes. quick: Do you think what what just happened here in this two hours is worthy of putting up on YouTube? I think it's worthy of putting up and seeing if it gets more than five views. And then if we will know if it's worthy to it, an actual audience instead of it just will, us. Okay. okay. I'm going to tell you it will for one reason that I know is that there are a at least a dozen or more stick fans who will be interested. Um, and then um, okay. there's, just, there's that, my built-in audience. So that's going to okay, be at least right. a, a, you know, 30, 40 people. <laughs> Ooh, nice. I can't wait to read the comment section. <laughs> um, it's not. No, I don't. I, 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 my, I, I think I've, I've crafted a world where um, people that are they're jerk offs. They they're first of all, they're quickly deleted from my shit whenever it happens. But I think most right. people go to my comments and go, ah, this isn't the place where people are talking shit. This is the place where people are all like, right. I love that album, too. Yeah, um, yeah, totally, totally. So totally. unless, of course, somebody, whenever somebody gets into my content where I have been political about stuff, you will see uh, people that come out and, and be like, you know, trying to sway me another way. And I'm just like, you're barking up the wrong tree, dude. But um, right. we are who we are. But we yeah. but we'll but yeah, so we'll we, we'll we'll put this out and we'll we'll figure it out, figure out how what everybody thinks about it. And okay. and then um, and then we'll I move we on from there. Up. Can we okay? We'll move on from there. But I was like, can we come up with other shitty things that Steven Tyler has done? I mean, I think we might. We just spoke. We should just focus on weird shit that Steven Tyler did. I think I, I'm sure. Like, if you're bringing that up, people are gonna say that um, I don't want to miss a thing is a shitty thing that Steven Tyler did. But I love that song. Okay, <laughs> you do. You do love that song. <laughs> I love. I, I love all the Aerosmith. I just. I love that band. Okay um right but uh but like i said i don't know i'm i'm on the fence but at this point steven tyler is uh, they've they're retiring because he can't sing anymore unfortunately right sure. um but uh i don't know I, okay. I, we could we could we could probably find shitty things that all sorts of different sure um, and the, sure. the good conversations would be for us to look for shitty things that people we admire did and then we have the we have to wrestle with the reality of that. You yeah, know? right. Um, so, can I ask you one last question? Sure. Okay. Phase is a close-up picture of a window. No. The artwork. No. What is that? It's um. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ! This is another long answer. Um, okay. The short answer is the the apartment that I lived in when I started writing and recording that was the s smallest place I'd ever lived. Like it was almost just a little bit bigger than this room was how big that okay. apartment was. When you walked into the front door, there was one like almost like a, a three foot by three foot area that was tile. And then it got and then it was carpet. And throughout the years, That's the floor. It's the floor. And throughout the years, that tile had gotten cracked and the carpet cracked. had started to come up. And so right. I put tape over the carpet. You'll see tape yeah. on the edge. Yeah. And so it's literally, it was supposed to be like a snapshot of like, that's what my life was around that time where I had, I had separated wow. from my kid's mom, but I uh -huh. still was taking care of my kid most of the time. And all of a sudden right. we went to this life where all of a sudden we went from being in a pretty nice size house to yeah. a fucking closet. <laughs> and so um, okay. that was kind of like me picking the shittiest part of that apartment. And okay. I took a picture of it and I okay. just went, that could be an album cover. And then, then the rest is history. So. Okay. That's awesome. Cause I spent, you know, I'm sitting there listening to your songs and I'm looking at that picture and I'm like, wow, that's so cool. It's like a window that you can't see through, which was interesting. I thought you were really <laughs> And then I was like, and that's definitely duct tape, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, dude, like, remember when, uh, when President 
Bush told people to to keep duct tape in their house so they had to duct tape their windows in case of chemical attack or whatever yeah. when they were trying to gin us up to go to war with Iraq yeah. or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? And I thought I thought you were poking artistic fun at this cracked window that you I, couldn't see through the tape around that. Okay, but that was carpet. That was your I'm not that, that I'm not that clever. But even even more so like the very first song on that album on that uh-huh. thing, I think it's called 2042 or something like that that's yes. literally my apartment number and that okay. song that song is all about me when, when i had free time to myself i didn't want to go anywhere i just wanted to get drunk and buy records and stuff to make myself feel better that whole yeah. song is just about that it's about me okay. all of a sudden feeling like i'm not i'm not i'm, I'm back at rock bottom again i'm in this little apartment and apartment, right. and i can't I don't want to go out. I just want to disconnect from everything. And I'm, you know, I'm now, I'm, I want to buy things in order to make myself feel better. That's what that song is all about. So, wow. Okay. Yeah. I just thought that was like phase. And I thought, you know, how we go through phases. This That's the a- song phase is that it's literally okay, about, then. it's literally about like, um, having the awareness that whatever is happening is probably going to change and it was almost like a reminder to myself that song that song yeah and then the song old head is literally Uh where the name of this channel came from yeah and that's about me feeling disconnected from music yeah um and feeling like i'm not i'm not the demographic anymore um and what's the last song on that that ep called the, the expert is the last song on that EP, and that one yeah, is right. about um, um, internet news outlets or pundits or whatever that present things like they have all the answers, and sure. whatever they're telling you is one hundred percent facts, and you should listen to them. And it's just sure. me going like, "Oh, okay. Well, I guess I don't need to think anymore because you're the expert." Right. And you're so, the expert. so that's Thanks. my that, Thanks. that's I don't have that's to what, do my own thinking now. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, okay. So that's my that's the, the there you go. That's a run down. It's so nice to talk about these things because I they nobody gave that much of a shit about them for me to really talk about them when they came out. <laughs> right. so, yeah, nobody does. Nobody does, right? It's weird, right? You put all that yeah. time into it, and then it's like you know, oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, I got some good. Re- I got I got a little bit of a good reception from a small amount of people, but it died down really quick. Um, but yeah. well, okay. Did you see that? Because uh, Tobin sent us that email or that text or whatever that had that. Um, it was uh, Underground Incorporated. Did you watch that movie or? Have I haven't. Wa- I that? haven't. I haven't watched it yet. Okay, well, so as soon as you, as soon as I started watching it, I th- was thinking about what you said in the video that you did for us. Thank you very much. You were like, "About we were so lucky that all of this music was just it was coming out as fast as we could buy it." You know what yeah. I mean? It was like yeah. all these great bands. And when you listen, when you if you watch that movie, and I highly recommend it because the whole okay. time I was like, "Oh, I wish Stephen and I were watching this movie together." So we could be like. <laughs> Yes, this was when I, you know what I mean? Because, like, there was all these bands that I forgot about, you know what I mean, or whatever, and they're all in there, and they're all talking about their experience, and the experience is exactly what happened to us. It is. It was a industry-wide thing. It was not personal. You know, it was, not, it was nothing. It was just what happened. Yeah. And hear each member talk about their own individual experience – and have it be so similar was like, yeah, I could see why Mike was really into it and why he recommended that to us and why he recommended that to you too. Like he didn't do that on the other thread. He did it on the thread that you were on. Yeah. Because I, I think he really wanted you to check that movie out. And I found uh, it on YouTube. It was okay. Brand- yeah. I'm gonna have to go, just go find it. Cause I I've heard of it before. Cause I think sure. like failure and other bands are on yes. that or something. Which what I think- you remind me of. Oh, I love failure. Love them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so that's, I think that's why that, that movie was first on my radar, but then I just never found it anywhere. So I'll have to yeah. go check it out. Okay. Good night. Cool. Well, that's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll wrap, we'll wrap it up. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the first episode of Smurlin head. I don't know, whatever the right, fuck it's going to be go. called. Right. If we yeah. come up with a better title by the time I post it, um, then we'll, we can call it that. Um, 
but okay. uh, but we'll we'll uh, we'll I'm, now I'm talking to the audience since I know people are going to watch this. Um, if you're still here, thank you for watching, and um, uh, we will we're we're not going to set any expectations with this show. So we, they will be coming out however we come together and whatever we talk about, and it's just going to be what it is, and that's it. That's you know that's that's all that's all that's all we can say. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, I the people that watch my shit, especially that make it all the way through really long things, I'm all like, okay, that makes me feel like what I'm doing is pretty entertaining, kind of entertaining, you know? Sure. Um, awesome. But uh, but yeah. So we'll we'll I'm gonna si- I'm gonna sign off from the video before I sign off with you. So don't just jump off of here, oh. talk willy nilly. Um, okay. All right. Th- thanks for watching whatever the show is, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.